All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mayor Arnold? Here. Mayor Arnold? Here. Aye. Mayor Decker? Here. Mayor Hudson? Here. Mayor Corbett? Here. We need to adopt the agenda. I need a motion. Will we adopt? Second. Motion, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, public hearings, seeing none, we'll move to new business. First item of new business is loan finalization for the Byram Family Park Land. Uh, and I think I just took care of all that. Yeah, we just pretty much uh, signed off the paperwork for the loan for the um, to borrow the money so that we can purchase the Tom Byram uh, Family Park area. Uh, so that's been taken care of. We, I, I do have the a representative from the bond fund here to explain uh, the situation we have where we refinanced the community center uh we started that process with a resolution and then the uh, the bank decided that they would not uh fund certain uh projects that were coming up on their pathway and they they basically bailed out so um kevin has, has, has had to do some research for us so i thought i'd have him explain what happened there and we tell us what the plan is vote on that. uh no sir we do not no Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the board, I appreciate your time today, and thank you guys for having me up here. Um, as I'm sure each of you are aware and have probably heard too many times, uh, COVID has changed the world, business, and governments over the last few months. Unfortunately, it also created havoc in the financial sector. In mid-May, First Horizon Bank notified us that they did not intend to honor the loan agreements and interest rates for seven pending loans. All three of your loans were impacted during this. Um, we remained in constant contact and ultimately the bank <clears throat> notified us that they would honor the funding, but they reneged on and raised the interest rates. Um, in addition, their condition to honor that funding was, uh, was based on all loans closing by June 22nd, which given the notification would have been one week. And since none of the loans have been approved by the state, it was impossible to close them in that time. So we immediately reached out to other banks in our network and also have brought a couple new banks into our network as well to place the loans with our commitment being to you that we would place them under the original if not better terms um, so the parkland loan that we just closed that the mayor just signed um, when we were notified that first horizon they wanted to raise the interest rate from 2.7 to 3.42 percent uh, we found a new bank that was willing to honor the original 2.71 rate as we discussed and you guys proved in mid-April. Um, the bank was even able to fund this loan on a very short turnaround, given that the, the proceeds will be wired next week. Um, and we are very pleased with the performance and I'd like to make specific uh, acknowledgement and recognition of Citizens Bank of Lafayette because um, they really stepped up and they worked well and we hope that you guys um, are able to enjoy this parkland for generations to come. Um, the, the main loan that, that Mr. Herman asked me to discuss tonight uh, was, the, of course, the community center loan that you guys began last year in May um, and passed a resolution a couple months ago uh, on the recognition of a reduction in the interest rate. We've gone to the bank multiple times, uh, six, five other times, you would have been the sixth, for rate reductions for loans that closed in the same window that you did when rates were at their peak. Um, and recognition that rates have fallen. So the bank notified us um, that they were no longer willing to honor that um, about three, four weeks ago now. Um, and we turned around and requested that if that is the case, then they waive the 1% prepayment premium that's attached to the loan. Uh, they declined to waive the 1% prepayment, prepayment premium as well. Um, I know that this leaves the city in a tough position and on behalf of the entire ball fund, I sincerely want to apologize for that. Um, the city requested and we assist and we are currently assisting finding a new home for the community center loan. We're in conversations with multiple banks that have expressed interest and actually on my drive up there, we just heard back from the first one who has actually provided a rate and you know, a guarantee that we are willing to step forward with today. Um, we just received a 3% rate that would be locked in for 10 years, and then it would still be on a 20-year amortization. So the amortization um, would not change dramatically much for the city. Um, you'd still have the payoff over a 20-year period. The interest rate would be 3% for a 10-year period. Um, and this is 
an extra year, basically an extra year locked in extended um, to your current uh, rate term, which would have expired nine years from May. Um, the, the loan would no longer have a 1% prepayment premium attached to it. And the trade-off would be that there would be a five-year lockout or no-call period. So the, rate, the, the loan couldn't be refunded within a five-year period. Um, unfortunately, the draw feature is no longer available um, for any of the banks that have responded so far. We're still waiting on responses from two others. Um, as I mentioned, on the original First Horizon loan, there is a 1% prepayment premium on the outstanding balance. To date, the city has drawn $323,000 of the $10 million loan availability. Um, as a measure of goodwill and just um, our attempt to, to attempt to rectify the situation, the bond fund is committed to cover the $3,230 prepayment premium for the city. Um, in addition, since we are moving banks from uh, one bank to another bank, should you guys choose to proceed, uh, we would have to pay attorney costs, um, but we would we have agreed to reduce the cost of issuance on the loan from our original 0.6% on the original loan to 0.3%, so it would be $30,000 total cost of issuance. Um, I hate delivering any message like this because I assure you that this is not the way that I or the bond fund wants to do business or has ever desired to do business. We've always prided ourselves on delivering what we committed to deliver at the outset, and I apologize for midstream changes and failure on my side. Um, I thank you for your time, your patience, and your indulgence, and uh, that completes what I have to say. So if there are any questions, I do stand prepared to help to hopefully address them. I personally don't feel like you guys have failed us in any way. I think First Horizon may have. Yeah. You said in the new loan, we won't be any draws. It'll be, we have to take the total amount up front. Yes, sir. Yeah, unfortunately, um, none of the banks that we're working with right now are willing to put any loans on a fixed rate draw anymore. Um, they have cited, yeah. as everyone else, the, the current uncertainty from COVID-19. Okay. So the, the balance of the be deposited upon whenever the city didn't want to move forward with closing. That, that project seems to be moving a little bit uh, faster than our original schedule. We're uh, scheduled to be with the Planning Commission for site plan approval on the community center in July. Uh, and it looks like they're going to be going out to bid in August now instead of uh, October. So it looks like we may be able to close by the end of October, maybe with a contractor. So hopefully we'll have that for August meeting. We'll see how that goes. But right now we're on. We, they they cut our. They, they basically took about seven weeks out of the out of the project. So they, they they're ahead of schedule, which I'm very happy about. So that's all I have. Thank you, Kevin. If anybody else Thank has any questions much. for him? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the board. Any other questions? I'm happy to try to address. Anybody got anything else? All right, resolution 2014 is a resolution to annex certain territories and incorporate same within the corporate boundaries of the city of White House. This is first reading. I need a motion. I move that we approve. I have a second. Second. Any discussion, Sages? All right, uh, thanks to your package shows the map. Uh, on Tyree Springs, uh, Palmer's 29.75 acres would be annexed in the city. Uh, for uh, future development, which is the next ordinance uh, resolution that you vote on. This is the property that uh, the, the front part of the property is already in the city. It was the back that wasn't. This is the one that y'all approved a special exception on uh, wastewater because there's a force main that runs right through the center of that property. Uh, so that was a while back ago. But just, just if you're trying to put something in perspective, that's the same parcel. This, this is the one that didn't want to be in the city. Right. Now the one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The initial plan was to put a house right. back into the county side. Yeah. Right. And we were going to honor the connection to the sewer system, even though they would have been outside the city. Yeah. Yes, Will any of this affect that force main, Andy? Which one that? This development That's on Tyree. Yeah, they're all, they're all going to affect the force main. But I can't honestly answer that uh, straightforward until one of them looks and get that sewer model back. I'll do 
baby figures and everything else. So I don't want to speak prematurely, but yes, it will affect the force main. Okay. Any questions? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Ordinance 2012 <laughs> is an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance regarding plan unit development, Article 5, Section 5.056. Five, residential plan development first reading. I need a motion. Motion for a second. Second. Sieges. We had a, we had a special session which involved uh, you and the planning commission uh, to go over the uh, ability of what the club uh, can uh, function as to do. And uh, one of the things that developers that we met with was in our uh, ordinance, we had minimum lot width and minimum lot size. So the Planning Commission voted to recommend the um, approval after a few study sessions and conversations. Uh, we removed the minimum lot size and the minimum uh, lot, uh, lot width. We also changed some language to require brick to grade all around on all four sides, whereas before we had uh, just brick to grade on the front and then percentages for uh, they could do vinyl inputs. Uh, and we also discuss the buffer zone uh, in the PUDS with the Planning Commission uh, being able to make recommendations on increasing that buffer size when they talk it. So those are the things that are changing in the zoning ordinance. Uh, you mentioned brick to grade around the, the, the entire house. Did we do anything above grade? Uh, well, in the orders, in the wording, um, it, it just it's basically, um, basically the front of the house had to have brick, and, and, and you could use masonry products. Uh, you know, with a 50% of it had to be brick or stone, and the rest of it had to be brick to grade. Brick to grade is a bring issue of no matter comes, you know, from the foundation up to grade. Uh, that's what was already required. What the planning commission approved was was to require masonry product completely around the building, all four sides, all the way up. So there would be no vinyl. Vinyl was removed completely. That was my question without saying the word vinyl. Okay. Yeah. All right. I like it. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Ordinance 2013 is an ordinance amending the zoning map from Sumner County Rural Residential to SRPUD. Suburban Residential Plan Unit Development on Tyree Springs Road. This is first reading. I need a motion. I move to approve. I have a motion. We have a second. Second. Motion second. Sages. Uh, this is uh, changing from what's this? What's this? Uh, I mean, what's the land down exam? Lenar Homes will be developing uh, on this uh, on this lot. Uh, I will disclose that they uh, had some challenges or some issues with their survey. Uh, we have to be three acres, uh, three acres a unit, which they came back at 3.07, which is within the scope. So they are still at three point, uh, at three units an acre, but they're adhering to our ordinance. But I, I had to disclose that, um, you know, uh, in this uh, on the record. Um, but um, I made the recommendation that the Planning Commission approve and recommend to, to the board uh, this plan to be SRPD. It's going to be an 89 unit lot, uh, 89 unit development. And we got, we got our side setbacks to take care of? Yeah. They, they were fine with the side setbacks. They were using the setbacks. And one thing I will go back and say one thing that did not change was the setbacks and the minimum yard sizes in the SRPD. Uh, we'll be that order. So any development coming before you still have the setbacks that were in order. Uh, so the NAR development does meet those minimums. Did you hit them up for a buffer? Right there. We're working on it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion? Right. Given the rain we had, I assume the storm basins are all sufficient to... On that track of land, I don't know that there were any issues with flooding down uh, on, on that area. Really? Uh, the uh, yeah. South Palmas Chapel, is there going to be a, a light? No. No, they just traffic, the traffic <clears throat> study, uh, 
they were going to pre present private study with the final master. They didn't present with the preliminary. Uh, but just, just in conversation, uh, we are looking to do some practice calming features, uh, like I uh, suggested a, a crosswalk at Palmer Chapel, also a sidewalk on uh, the west side of uh, Tyree Springs, and uh, to, to run you know north to another developed proposed development, which uh, we'll talk about another day. But uh, we're looking to, to add sidewalk features for crossing that street uh, at South Farmers. But as of now, uh, I did speak with the school board uh, who said that uh, they'll work with us to possibly add, add some signage. Uh, it's not something they typically do, uh, but he did, the school, the school board planner did mention that he would help us out. That's what that uh, commissioner was trying to get done, you know, with the off, so they, they, they don't do it on off street right. elementary school. Right. I know they were trying to find a way to get some type of traffic control there themselves. Yeah, so uh, in the morning, that's it's right. busy. Really? Seven at about right. 2.30. Yeah. Those are the two yeah, people probably. leaving for work. Yeah. One concern that we had with the traffic study was the fact that uh, it would be done during the COVID-19 when school traffic wasn't right. uh, fully formed. There are some models uh, and some predictions that uh, I talked with Jason Reynolds about. Uh, I don't know what this traffic study will say, but I'm, I'm more than sure that it will, it will account for that with uh, the model predictions. Uh, Based on what the traffic flow was previous. To, uh, so with the, oh, the study's coming. It's coming. Yeah, it has to be. If the study says that it needs, whatever, yeah. the, the, the developers yeah. gonna. Yes. Yeah. Uh, responsible. Like so, the one thing we we were gonna add, we asked them since is, is to put it. I mean, we normally have sidewalks on each side of the street within the subdivision, but at this time we've asked them to put a sidewalk from one property corner to the other along Tyree Springs to start that connection because one day if, if these farms do develop into subdivisions, we'd like to see a connection all the way down from the high school to the elementary school. Mm -hmm. Would be nice to have a sidewalk along that side. And that's important. And we're going back to your stormwater. If you look at the, the number of basins that they have to have here, you know, before the MS4 permit uh, requirements, there probably would have been half of that or it's even that amount of stormwater basins that stormwater has to be able to capture into, plus they have a stream Right through the center of the property, which is a benefit. So I would I would say that, and we like I said, we've not had problems with with the, the new subdivisions that have been put in once they're in place, and the, you know, the, and, the, and the stormwater is functioning properly. We've not had problems in those subdivisions. Obviously, we've had some problems as they've been developing in them in the process because we got all that flat muddy land. Uh, but they do they do improve as they get as they get built out. So. We have some pretty good. The team on the stormwater side of you know, to, to mitigate that uh, reduce flood Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 To approve or reject single source request for fiscal year 2020 to 2021, Andy recommends approval. I need a motion. I move approve. approve. Second. Motion and second. We can discuss this if you guys want to, but we have to do this every year. It's the yeah. same people. <laughs> Yeah, we normally do it at the July meeting, but they ran they they kind of ran out of pumps early, so they thought that they they could get on this a little bit quicker. They could get their pumps ordered that they need to get. So. We commandeered source source letters too from each manufacturer. If you guys need a copy of it, grinder pumps, buddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> keep keep plugging along, and getting some gravity. Yes, sir. We're still working at it. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Appreciate you guys coming out on a Tuesday afternoon. We're adjourned. Thank you all. Appreciate that. <clears throat> I, I, I would have slid in. We have a grant.